Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Friday Night Young at Heart, featuring nursery rhymes, story songs, poems, Mother Goose, Aesop's fables, Lewis Carroll, limericks, larks, epic stories of the great operas, and such to keep us all young at heart. Continuing with the saga of La Aventure di Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi, we will have chapters 28 and 29, most exciting, most surprising, things we never would have thought would happen to Pinocchio if we had only known the Disney version. Fun to make all these comparisons and to recognize what the Disney crew the storytellers, the storyboarders, the screenplay writer, and Mr. Disney himself decided to uh, condense and highlight of these adventures. But with, fur no, with no further ado, uh, much ado about nothing, I, Father James DeLucia, with my Bruce Springsteen shirt, will summarize for you. Yeah, for you. Pinocchio, chapters 28 to 29. Well, you recall, those schoolboys tricked Pinocchio going to the beach and there was a big rowdy, rowdy fight and that one little boy, Eugene, was knocked on the head with Pinocchio's vast, vast pile of school books because he was outstanding in his scholarly achievements. Amazing, a wooden puppet. Go figure. Well... Eugene was knocked out and Pinocchio was blamed, although it was not he who threw the books, uh, and the police send a mastiff. You know, mastiff. I'll put a, uh, a link to a picture of a mastiff on the Facebook pages of this, of this upload, uploaded video so you can really appreciate, appreciate, or appreciate, whichever you prefer, this, the humongous dynamics of this particular breed of pups, the Mastiff. So the Mastiff goes after Pinocchio and they disappear in a cloud of dust that the policeman can't find them. That's where we left off. And now Pinocchio once again comes to a cliff going into the sea and he jumps in and swims with all his life. And so too does the Mastiff. Now it just so happens that Unlike all the other dogs in the universe, this Mastiff doesn't doggy paddle by instinct and begins to sink. Pinocchio reaches a small island and uh, is so glad to be free of the Mastiff who he was sure was going to gobble him up. But the Mastiff cries out, cries out for Pinocchio by name. Fascinating how in this story, all these creatures and other puppets and other people just seem to know that there is a Pinocchio. So Pinocchio does have pity, particularly uh, Coladi reminds us that he thinks of those few lessons he received from his father that keep coming back even in the midst of all his mischief. And he takes pity and compassion on the Mastiff. He swims out and brings him to shore. The Mastiff is just so waterlogged he can hardly speak, but he does mention a thank you and then um, he promises Pinocchio that if Pinocchio is ever in trouble, just to call him uh, his name. I almost forgot to tell you his name. We get the name of this Mastiff, and it's Alidoro. Alidoro, as in friend to adore, I think. I guess. So, on we go. Pinocchio goes, uh, goes off. The Mastiff returns to the land. Pinocchio comes back to another part of the land where he sees a cave and he thought, oh, how wonderful, I can dry off and rest in this cave. Uh, but just as he approaches, he gets pulled up in a net that had been on the, the bottom of the seafloor, picked him up with hundreds and hundreds of fishes, and out of the cave comes the most ugly, disgusting fisherman you would ever see. His appearance, his skin is green, his hair is seaweed. Everything about him is green and scary and smelly and dirty. I was thinking of the Green Knight in our, remember our adventures with Sir Gawain and the Green Knight? 
You might recall that was a great story. Well, all the same. So he takes all these fish and then uh, Kulati mentions them all by name, um, mullet and uh, dole and and anchovies and all these, a whole host of names. But when he gets Pinocchio out, he thinks Pinocchio is a fish, even though Pinocchio talks back to him and he's convinced this will be a most tasty new species of fish he's never had. And so he puts uh, Pinocchio in the pot with all the fish and he covers it with flour because he's going to bread it and fry them and frying poor Pinocchio. Pinocchio's crying out, crying out. And who comes to his rescue? You know, the Mastiff, Alidoro, and he grabs Pinocchio in his mouth along with some of the other fish and brings him safe to a place on the shore. How did you come to rescue me, said Pinocchio, and the Mastiff says, well, I could smell this fish frying because the, the, uh, green fisherman had already begun frying some of the fish. Thankfully, Pinocchio was not in the first batch. And I was hungry. So there you have it. There's more in this chapter, but I'm looking at my time. I'm six minutes and a half into this. And my dear friend Catherine always reminds me, don't be too long. And so I will leave you there with this kind of happy ending. But know that many more adventures are in store. Indeed. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. God bless.